Hey everyone, this is Brian Hoops, Midwest Market Solutions President, and our uh, this is our Market Insider TV report. It's the WASDE edition. Uh, crop report has been released, markets have closed, um, initially kind of sold off, and then found some buying interest in this market here. And uh, we're going to analyze the report, kind of talk about what it means. We'll go through uh, some of the commodities here, and don't want to take a lot of your time, but uh, if you have questions after this uh, webinar just reach out to me uh, make sure you follow us on Twitter at Midwest markets our website is listed there midwestmarketsolutions.com uh, where you can find information about all of our offices and um, we're gonna give you our opinions of what we believe is going to happen with uh, with the markets and kind of where we expect uh, marketing to go from here um, we do a webinar each and every crop report that comes out. We talk about the implications and what it means. Of course, during the week, uh, we have tons of newsletters available. Some of our branch offices write uh, their own newsletters. I myself do a, a, a daily newsletter every morning, um, a weekly newsletter. If you don't want to read something every week, you can read just kind of an overview of what happens on a weekly basis. That includes analysis of the Commitment of Traders Report. Um, we also have a specific hedge newsletter for clients that just want hedging information, recommendations, where to you know, sell their crop at, where to buy, calls, buy puts, that sort of thing. And uh, finally, we have a uh, trading newsletter for just guys who are interested in speculative trade comments. Um, you can subscribe to that or you can uh, uh, you know, become a brokerage client and receive all that information for free. So a lot of uh, information available to you here. Um, just. You know, just give us kind <coughs> excuse me just reach out to us we'd be glad to uh, to assist you in any way possible there's a list of our offices there also <coughs> are found on our homepage midwestmarketsolutions.com we were founded in 2002 and uh, we've been clearing with RJ O'Brien is our clearing firm so we have offices in, in Missouri two in Iowa South Dakota uh, two in Minnesota, North Dakota, Montana, Illinois, Nebraska, South Dakota. So a lot of offices there all around the Midwest. And let's uh, let's get into what uh, the USDA had to say. It was uh, an interesting day. I think from a standpoint of hoping that there will be a lot of movement, a lot of big surprises, that part was a disappointment um, as the USDA really didn't surprise anybody. There was some bullishness, some bearishness uh, for markets here. Uh, so everybody got a little bit of taste of something, but you know we did f close a little firmer in some of these grains today. Okay, so um, corn production. Let's look at f first corn production and soybean production. This was a surprise, kind of a little berry surprise. Um, production is up from last month, and the average yield is up from last month. So USDA said 168 bushels per acre. Um, previous number was 167 now this is down significantly from last year 176.4 I know a lot of people that I talk with don't believe this USDA number they, they've never believed it all fall um, they just have to believe that the, the crop is much smaller than that in fact I talked with somebody today who said they talked uh, to someone who firmly believes the crop is 158 not 168 now maybe the USDA is wrong but these are they're doing farmer surveys um, to get to this number so it's farmers that are telling uh, the USDA these yield numbers FC Stone uh, Informa um, a lot of other research companies that do either farmer surveys or other statistical analysis have all come in this range of 167 168 169 um, so I gotta believe the final number here is gonna be one you know, in this 168 range now um, USDA did announce today they are going to resurvey farmers that still have crap in the field. So there's what 3.75 million acres as of December 1 um, sitting out in the fields yet. There's some that's been harvested, some will be harvested in the spring, and those acres will be resurveyed. So um, we're going to see a, a little bit of a change in the yield. I don't expect we're going to see much in the way of a change on this number, but this is a number we have to work with uh, for most of this marketing year. Soybean production also up. This is half a bushel an acre. Corn was a full bushel. This is half and half a bushel. Harvested acres, notice both corn and soybean acres down from last month. I uh, keep saying last month, but it was actually November. Um, you know, so th the production is a little bit larger than um, than two months ago for corn and soybeans. So we've got a little bigger crop to work with than what the trade was banking on. How that affects any stocks, we're going to go through commodity, commodity here. Um, 
corn numbers well above the average trade guess. Soybean number well above the average trade guess. Wheat was right in line with the guesses. Um, the corn number is 18 million bushels less than last month. The soybean number is exactly the same and the wheat is 9 million less than last month. So here's, here's a case where we were hoping for something, some excitement, we really didn't get it. Um, we didn't get uh, you know a, a surprise to the trade. I, I thought we'd drop any stocks a little bit farther than this. I think I was at like 1.81 uh, when I did my survey estimates, and soybeans I was down like 4.10 or something. So you know there's some people who are looking for much larger numbers. Some are looking for a much tighter number in both corn and soybeans. Just look at those numbers. Um, but the USDA did not give us any type of a, a major surprise on these uh, numbers. Uh, we also have quarterly stocks, and, and this is uh, something that a lot of people you know, may not pay attention to, but it, it gives us maybe a little bit more accurate number of usage, especially feed usage. And the USDA really jumped up their feed usage in today's category. Um, the, the average trade guess, the corn stocks, was smaller than the average trade guess due to increased feed usage. And that's that's significant because that is one, the one area of demand that is, is bullish for corn. Soybean uh, stocks actually above the trade guess. And we are way down from last year, but this is the second largest soybean stocks in history. Um, corn stocks down from last year. Wheat stocks down from last year. And wheat stocks well below the average trade guess. We, we're moving a little bit more wheat than I think a lot of people had thought. Uh, and that is likely being sourced into the feed rations. Let's look at some commodities here. Corn, soybeans, then wheat. Uh, and I saved the winter wheat acres for, for wheat because that was another component of today's report. Um, here, here's the corn balance sheets. This is the old crop marking year. This is the new crop marking year to the right over here. And you can see the bushel per acre increase. You can see smaller planted, smaller harvested acreage coming out here. Beginning stocks uh, are up a little bit because of changes here in the balance sheet from old crop inventory levels. But the big big changes here, supply increased a little bit, but, but look at that on the very right, look at this 250 bushel per eight million bushel, excuse me, 250 million bushel increase in feed usage. We're feeding a lot more um, crop than what we had anticipated, much more than last year, 5.5 uh, million tons. This is the one area that's really a, a friendly surprise. Ethanol usage is pretty stagnant, pretty constant. We may see a pickup in ethanol uh, as crude oil prices rise. If we see gas prices rise, that may uh, give us, a, you know, that spread difference between the value of ethanol and, uh, and gasoline. So we may see an uptick in, in ethanol demand and exports here drop 75 million bushels. And we'll talk about this here in, in the next slide a little bit more. I have some thoughts on that. I think our exports are going to pick up uh, relatively soon. But bottom line here is total usage is up 155 million at 14.07 billion bushels. We didn't produce enough crop to meet our usage, but yet we've got such a big carryover, 2.1 to 2.2 billion bushels of old crop last year, marking year. This current marking year, we're at almost 1.9, just call it 1.9. That's a, that's a pretty pretty large number, any way you want to look at it. Okay, so here's the balance sheets, a, a little bit different formula. USDA here in the third from the right column, my numbers for this marking year and the new crop marking year, because this is important, I think, to look at. Um, I use pretty much the USDA numbers as far as, as demand. I did uptick ethanol usage a little bit for the reasons that I stated. I think we're going to see a little bit more uh, usage for ethanol uh, than what we have in the past. I've got a little bit more seed usage going here. A little bit more seed usage uh, for this next year. We're going to plant more, more crop. And as far as feed usage, I'm dropping it just a little bit because uh, I think we're going to, uh, you know, see a little bit more uh, feet, wheat being fed uh, versus the corn. Uh, as far as exports, I do look for a pretty good recovery with the Chinese demand. Um, and so what we end up with, uh, I want to talk about exports a little bit more. We're at 1.775. I think we could see an uptick here in January and into February. Brazil's been undercutting our export markets and I think they're going to run out of crop in February. We should see an increase right before their harvest. We should see an increase of U.S. exports and I think that's going to be uh, you know, a little bit better for our export business but 
that will keep us right at the same level. We won't have to decrease uh, usage any further than that. But going into next year, I, I would for, look for a pretty good uptick in demand. So you can play with these numbers and we probably will adjust them as we go into the, this new marketing year. Even if you jump this feed usage to back to 5.5 where the USDA is, your ending stocks are still gonna be 2.674. So any way you slice it, you're looking at 2.6 to 2.8 billion bushels of carryover. That's assuming we grow a normal crop. Assuming we plant about 91 million acres, uh, our yield jumps back up into this average up in here, this 176 range, and you can play with these numbers. They, they, they'll be adjusted, but this is a huge number. Uh, and look at our stocks to use ratio. Uh, if we're if this all comes to pass, we're gonna produce 15.1, we're gonna use 14.3, 14.4, somewhere in that range. This is not gonna be a bull market unless we have some weather problems in the South America or we cut this yield down here in the US because uh, you know last year we cut yield we go to this year, we cut yield, we cut planted acreage down. Um, we just uh, just had a tough time with, you know, just seeing any type of a, a bull market in prices here. So I think, you know, going into this marketing year, you really, really have to play defense going forward, I think. Uh, I think you just uh, can't be overly bullish and optimistic on these markets. All right, for soybeans, minimal changes here. Didn't make much in the change. Up the yield, lowered harvested and planted acres beginning stocks down just slightly production offset those beginning stocks changes no changes for demand whatsoever ending stocks no change everything canceled each other out we're at we're at uh, 475 million bushels of old crop soybean stocks I can't argue with anything that the USDA said here the one thing that you maybe could make a case is we're on pace right now to hit this export forecast of 1.775 if for some reason uh, China becomes a really aggressive buyer, um, we could bump this up. In fact, if we go to the next slide, you'll, you'll see my export forecast here, 1.8. I bumped it up 25 million. I thought China you know, next week would probably be a fairly uh, aggressive buyer during the commencement ceremony. I think they're gonna come in and just my speculation, but they're gonna announce some sales of soybeans and corn, maybe wheat. Um, and kind of kick off this uh, signing ceremony with uh, with some purchases. Other than that, I don't think they're gonna buy much until we get into the summer, after the 4th of July, into August. That's the end of this marketing year. That's when I think they'll start to come in and start uh, doing some purchases after prices have peaked for the summer and starting to turn lower into the fall. Um, can't argue with anything else that they have. I did bump the exports up, so I'm a little tighter on the ending stocks, 4, 419 million bushels. For new crop, I'm looking for planted acres at 85 million. That's up significantly from this last year. But you look back here, this uh, you know goes back to 12 and 13. This is that's not out of the realm of possibility. We were at 83, 82, 83, 90, and 89 before this year. So I I think there's going to be an optimistic tone with uh, China that we're going to plant some soybeans. And you put the yield back at 50 and a half. And again, you can play with these numbers and and say kind of whatever you want. But that's not unrealistic given, you know, 48, 52, 49, 50 and a half. This 50 and a half seems pretty reasonable to me. Um, so your carry-in, I use the USDA numbers. Our production is 4.258. We're going to use, in my estimation, as much as we produce. I've got demand ramping up here as far as exports, over 2 billion bushels as China steps in and starts being a buyer. That's not unreasonable given back to where we were. In fact, 16, 17, 18, we're at 2.1 billion bushel exports. Um, I think you can maybe bump this up to 2.1, getting back to this level here, if you trust uh, China's gonna be an aggressive buyer. And if that's the case, maybe we cut these ending stocks down to 404 instead of 504. That's still gonna be a large, large number. This, this year here, according to USDA, 474, second largest in history trailing last year. Uh, if, if we go 404 instead of 504, it's like the fourth largest in history. It's a, it's a big number, any way you want to look at it. So again, um, maybe there's some upside potential, but look at these stocks to use ratios back here when we had much higher prices. We were at you know, four and a half, five percent, five percent, seven percent. Even uh, here at my 419 number, we're at 10 and a half. So not anything uh, uh, super bullish on the horizon unless again same with corn you have a 
uh, crop production problem in South America, which we're running out of time there, or in the United States. So be defensive on rallies uh, through these winter months. Use news from China. If we do get a, a bullish uh, export numbers uh, in the ceremony next week and we see a rally, use those to you know, become defensive. All right, wheat made even less changes than soybeans. No changes on production in this report. We'll look at winter wheat acreage and, and planted acreage here in a second. Um, so no production changes, very minimal seed usage. They upped feed usage a little bit, 10 million bushels. Exports are left unchanged. We're right on the pace to hit this 975. So not surprised that they would leave uh, this unchanged. But any stocks dropped just a little bit because of the feed usage to uh, 965. Now, is that bullish, bearish? Well, it's, it's much tighter Let's look at the next slide and we'll come back to the planted acreage. If you look at this column here, 965, it's a 45% stocks to usage ratio. The, the positive is it's down from the last three years where we were at over a billion bushels of ending stocks. It's down to 965. In fact, next year I have it dropping to 814. But look at these stocks to usage ratio, 45%. Last year we were 53 at my optimistic view for this new crop marking here, we're at 39. We've never been historically tight here, and you know, we're but tightest that we've been in the last 10 years, you know, it's 24 to 29. So we're double what our tight number is for stocks. So again, if you want to be bullish wheat, show me the supply and demand balance sheet fundamentals that suggest much higher prices to come here. Uh, based off of tight, tight balance sheet for the wheat. Planted acres, I thought this was an interesting number and not a surprise. If you watched my interview on TD Ameritrade Network on Thursday, looking at the report, this is one thing that we talked about is uh, hard red wheat acres would probably be down, but soft red wheat could see an increase over last year, and we did. Last year was 5.2, this year it's 5.6. Wheat stocks were pretty tight in uh, in the Ohio River area where we plant a lot of that soft wheat, so stocks were tight. Chicago market rallied at the expense of Kansas City and Minneapolis. That attracted some new crop acres. While Kansas City didn't rally, acres are coming in around 21.8 million, well below the average trade gas, well below last year, and you saw pretty heavy intermarket spread trade. In fact, uh, Kansas City versus Chicago has been an attractive spread trade uh, since December for these traders. Uh, all wheat acres are down from last year and uh, white wheat is just a little bit softer than a, a year ago. So uh, looking at these winter wheat seedings, Kansas City should gain against Chicago. Overall, our winter wheat acres are down. I've got that reflected in my balance sheet here. And um, I think you, you see a little bit of a reduction here for for these wheat numbers. So I don't think you're looking at any type of a you know real bull market on the horizon, uh, unfortunately, for um, wheat going forward. Okay, um, my, uh, my theme on this, be a little defensive, use rallies as ways to merchandise your inventory, basis levels are tight, and um, you know let our office help you out. If you're looking at making cash sales, you wanna reown it, we've got some option strategies that we can help you with, some future strategies, a um, lot of ways to play this market to, that'll limit your risk and give you some upside potential uh, if you are, you know, if you are doing that, if that's your strategy to merchandise some inventory. So let us help you out. Thanks for your attendance in today's meeting. Um, I did WHL Radio out of Des Moines today. On Tuesday, I'll be doing the AgriTalk podcast talking about this report and these markets. So I hope you tune in for those. Have a good night, good weekend, and until next time, talk to you soon. Brian Hoops for Midwest Markets.